ah, oh, this is going to be hard and, and it's going to be hard for me to not cry actually thinking about this. But in, and especially now looking at you I, I, mm. I, and listening to this record, I remind, it reminded me of Stu. Yeah. I, I thought of Stu a lot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you must, you must miss him terribly. It's, um, it, it's a major thing. And like I said, when I did that, that tour, it, it, was a, it was an opportunity to talk about some of that stuff and talk about the funny stories and, you know, because the, the size of his character was huge. <laughs> And as everybody's ever met him, he was very loud. <laughs> um, but he was an incredible guy. And I guess the, the 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 birth of that song, I was talking to some old friends in New York. There was somebody retiring in a radio station. I had to do like a, a video to send to them. We were talking on the phone. It just took me back to a lot of the times when I first met. And she was telling me about, you should watch this TV show, The Sopranos, and, and you should listen to this record. And it was the first time somebody was actually giving me things in a, in a foreign land like New York. And I was so influenced by what was going on. And... And it took me back, and I, I guess the opening line, you know, uh, old friends grow old and some don't make it at all. Obviously, that touches on, on Stuart. And then there's a lot of um, contrast between how things were when we had no responsibility to how things are when you have all the responsibility. And when you're younger, you, you, you're very um, in, free in exploring and experimenting, doing whatever you want to do. But then there's a point where you kind of, you're being pulled all over the place. And um, I guess the song's about that in some ways, but this life ain't easy, but it's the one that we all got is is the key to the song really, because that just came out. And then it's not about somebody moaning and groaning about their life. It's literally like, look, whatever's going on, this is where you're at and you're gonna have to just deal with it because you've only got one life. Yeah, and, yeah. And so, I... that, so that tagline is kind of integral to the, it's not poor me, this, that, and the other. It's actually, again, it's about hope and about, looking forward to like you know whatever you're going through it'll it'll get better in some ways or or you'll sort something out you know whatever yeah yeah it did give me a profound sense of the wheel turning yeah. this song and um but i did it, it again left me feeling well i am a very glass half full person as yeah. you know but it it, I, it it made me think you know looking like you say it's not woe is me and and your life actually must be Mm. Much easier and and happier now than than when we were knocking about in the late nineties. Well, it was a lot simpler in the nineties. You know, it's a bit like the old Chris Robinson thing. You know, you leave house when you're twenty two, one bag, and then before you know it, you're walking around with a lot more bags on your shoulder. You know, so there's a, it's, it's uh, that's one way of looking yeah, at it. So there's a lot of baggage that comes with life as well. Yeah. So, um, but no, I'm I'm in a very um, privileged and fortunate position with my family, particularly. You know, I love being a dad, and I love having my kids, and. Uh, and, and the family's important. And I'm lucky to be in a band that we all like each other and doing what we're doing and still being top of our game. And there's 15 year old kids coming into the shows and in the front row who just discovering the band on like Sailor V or something two albums ago and then going back and realizing, oh, you've got nine other albums. And that's, so that's it's, heartwarming. So it's amazing. Rather you know. like, uh, like Liam become, Gallagher's getting really young, you know, yeah. his fans are getting younger, you know, exactly, that's really yeah. cool. It's like when you go to an ACDC or a Stones gig, it's like generation thing going on. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of cool, you know. It's pure feeling. Yeah. So I'm feeling that this is, you're really writing from the heart here. Yeah. Like it feels very, uh, very personal. Not to say that your, your, yeah. your, your previous work wasn't personal, but it feels to me like since after your first album that you know I loved so much, mm. you, you, were, you were writing a lot through the glass of a tour bus or a hotel yeah. room looking at other people. Yeah. This feels like it's very much you. Yeah, I mean, the second and third record particularly was my first experiences of the world and then and then you get a bit older and you start experiencing your own life, I guess. You know, when, you, when you're 20, 26, up to that point, you, you're always looking out because there's nothing really going on with yourself in a massive way. But as you go through the stages of life, um, things start happening in your own personal life and your own surroundings. Um, so this album particularly, you know, I'd, I'd stopped touring in, in September last year. We finished in Brooklyn. And, um, you know, it's, it's an 11th album, 22 years of being on the road. And... I didn't have any creative block or writer's block, but I just felt like I needed to just stop. I don't know what, what, what was going on, but I just didn't feel like spending 16 hours a day waiting to perform uh, over and over again was, was doing it for me. The show was loving, I was loving it, and making the records I was loving, but I just wanted to stop. And when I came home, I just stopped doing everything. Um, and around about November, once my head started clearing a bit, I was having all these songs kind of informing me how I was feeling, you know, and. I was kind of alarmed in, in quietly what a lot of the songs were saying to me, but it was it felt like I was at a little bit of a crossroads and I didn't really want to stop it, turned out. It was that I wanted to change things up and, you know, maybe 
shift things around a little bit with my own life, my own lifestyle, my own experiences and and just make a few, I don't know, adjustments maybe, I don't know, but the songs were kind of telling me and I didn't edit anything, I just, I've got the lyric books in the house and they just start from there and they end down there and there's no scribbles out, they just were what they were. Very subconscious kind of record. Mm. Um, I never imagined being here talking about the record, I just thought it was going to be something I would do as a, a catharsis for myself and it would just go out. Uh, to, for myself, and I, I said that from day one. I didn't think this was a commercial record or anything like that. I just it was just something I was experiencing. I needed to get out of me as a, what like a painter or whatever. Um, but it turned out the songs were very moving for other people, and they wanted to bring it.